We we'll have our opening hymn at this time as the choir will lead us in our opening congregation of hymn. Glory, glory, hallelujah, since I laid my burdens down. you for another day. Yes, God. Yes, we God. thank you for another opportunity to praise yes, your God. name. Yes, for we realize that our God and your God all by yourself. Yes. We thank you for being omnipotent. You have all power. Yes, for you being omniscient, you know all about us. Yes, for being omnipresent, you're everywhere and you're way up and we know that you're here right now. Yes, we thank you for being our Jehovah Jireh for we know that you are our yes, provider. God. Thank you for being Jehovah Nisi, for thou art our yes, banner. Yes, Thank you for being Jehovah Rohi, the Lord is our shepherd. Yes, Thank you for being Jehovah Rapha, that the Lord is our healer. Yes, so we pause right now to call upon your name. Yes, for there's no other name that we can call upon. A name that has knee bending power, a name that has tongue confessing power. And there's salvation under no other name except the name of Jesus. So we pause right now with a spiritual attitude of gratitude just to say thank you. Before we ask anything of you, we just want to thank you for what you've already done. Thank you from how you already brought it. Thank you how you already kept us. Thank you that you never left us. Up. So we give your name the praise and the glory because you're worthy to be praised. Up. Have your way in this service right now. Have your way in every aspect of worship right now. We ask you to have your way. We thank you right now because we know you're worthy. 
Thank you. We feel your power. We feel your anointing. We feel your spirit. If it had not been for the Lord on our side, somebody tell me, where would I be? So we praise you now. If we had 10,000 dollars, we couldn't praise you enough. But on this Thanksgiving Day Eve, on this Wednesday before Thanksgiving, we're going to use the one tongue that we have to give your name all the praise up and give your name all the glory. You're worthy to be praised. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Thank God and amen. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you ought to thank him. You ought to thank him. Yeah. Because you've been so good. You've been so good. You've been Yes, 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 yes. You saved my soul. You saved, you saved.
thank you so much, praise and worship ministry. Let us prepare now to give to God a thanks offering. Amen, someone. Amen. And when you give to God, give with the spirit of expectancy that God hears and answers our prayers. Amen, somebody. And when you give, don't always bypass the larger bills to get to the smallest bill because it's not Sunday morning. You give in proportion to how the Lord has blessed you. Amen, somebody. Your giving doesn't have anything to do with anyone else, but it's a thank offering. Amen. Think about how much you have spent thus far getting ready for tomorrow. If old timey meat market could talk, if Sam's and Costco could talk, they mean somebody. I know they'll be speaking loud around my house. I saw some of the receipts. Amen, somebody. Let's have a thank offering as we prepare to give. Let us stand. God, we thank you for this opportunity to give back to you a portion of that which you have blessed us with. This is our expression just to say thank you. But it's often we're about to give. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Inside our face, each other, follow the direction of the ashes, and they come to your pew, wait on the direction of the ashes, and they get to you, you'll wind up back in your seat. Word and 
We want to look at this scripture together because this scripture epitomizes what Thanksgiving is about, about giving thanks. From the Gospel of Luke, the 17th chapter, verses 11 through 19. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 17, verses 11 through 19. Let us stand together. You'll find the following words recorded. And it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go, show yourself unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. Stay there. Well, he said, Go and show yourself to the priest. <coughs> they had leprosy. Mm -hmm. But because they were obedient, the text says that as they went, they were cleansed. Good Lord, help us. Yeah. In other words, uh, because they were obedient, yeah. the blessing that was waiting on them yeah. on their way to yeah. the priest. Yeah. You don't have to wait to shout after the battle. Yeah. Uh, verse 15. And one of them, not all ten, all ten received their healing. But one of them, somebody shout in one of them. When he saw that he was here, turned back with a loud voice and glorified God. Other translations say, turned back and thanked God. Gave God thanks. Verse 16 says, and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. 17, and Jesus answered and said, Where there, were there not ten that was clean? I thought I healed ten folks. I thought I blessed this church here, everybody in here. But where are the other nine? Only one had enough sense to come back and say thank you. But I healed ten. Good Lord, I must. Number 18. Thou not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. Everybody else went about that way, but this Samaritan returned to give thanks. And verse 19 said, And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way. Thy faith has made thee whole. But go back to verse 17. Here's what I want to lift for a sermon idea tonight. It said, And Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleans, but where are the other nine? I want to talk on this thanksgiving about I'm not responsible for the other nine. Where are the other folks who should have been here that not who not here? I ain't responsible for them. <laughs> if don't nobody else praise God, when God blesses me, I ain't responsible for nobody else but me. Y'all have a witness in here. Can we give God a praise in advance in here? Can we give God a thank you praise in advance in here? Can we tell God thank you in advance? Uh, if my neighbor don't praise him, I'll praise him. I got to praise him all by myself. If my neighbor don't say hallelujah, I'll open my mouth. I'm not responsible for nobody else but me. Give 
Amen, amen. Thank you, choir, for the music collection. And thank those of you who came out this night on this pre-Thanksgiving celebration night. It's a great turnout for the night. Thank you so much for coming out as we celebrate together. Amen, amen. Jesus said, were there not ten that was clean? Where are the other nine? I just want to talk a little while. I'm not responsible for the other nine. Amen, somebody. I'm responsible for giving thanks myself, whether anyone else does or not. Reverend Montgomery, Reverend Wilson, we thank God for each and every one of you, those who are present on this night. As we celebrate Thanksgiving, many times we've gotten it twisted. We think Thanksgiving is about what we have rather than who has us. It's not about where you live, but it is about who lives in you. It's not about your neighborhood, but do you love your neighbor as yourself? It's not about what you drive, but it is about who drives you. Amen. Praise originates on the inside, and it will show up on the outside. We have a tradition that we started around our house. Um, tomorrow we'll probably have 40 to 50 people at the house on tomorrow. But we don't give out takeout plates. Y'all with me? Some folks come and eat, then they want to take more with them after they be for the rest of the week. Amen. We buy takeouts, but everything after the evening, we take it and we take it down to the, to the homeless shelter. We take it down to transition, and we deliver it to those there so that they would have a happy Thanksgiving. So we look forward to once everything is over to taking the takeout place that normally folks would take with them and using that to be a blessing to somebody else. Amen. Try blessing somebody else tomorrow rather than just uh, saving food for the rest of the week. Nobody wants to eat our food for the rest of the week. No way. Amen, somebody. But we want to be a blessing to others who are around us. Amen. Let's I hold you alone tonight. Let's examine our text. And our text on tonight, we find our Lord and Savior Jesus leaving Jerusalem. And he traveled along the coast of Samaria and Galilee. While he was traveling along the border of the coast, he encountered 10 men who were lepers. They were lepers because they had a disease called leprosy. Leprosy was a skin disease that would resemble the psoriasis of the skin now where your skin was peeling and turning white on you all the time. Well, when Jesus encountered these 10 lepers, uh, the lepers cried out, have mercy on us, Lord Jesus. But Jesus told them to go and show yourself unto the priest. And he wanted them to go and show themselves to the priest. They were obedient. And they went, and while they were on their way, they were healed of their leprosy. It takes strong faith to move and act when you cannot see the results. But they trusted the Lord enough that they took God at his word. Well, see, those who had leprosy, when someone would come within a certain distance of them, they had the crowd unclean, unclean, announcing that they had leprosy. And sometimes the leprosy would go into remission. And when it would go into remission, then they would go before the, the priest and they would be welcomed back into society. But it's very interesting that there were 10 that were healed but only one, verse 15, said that with a loud voice came back and glorified God and told God, thank you. And that one just happened to be a Samaritan. See, during that time, the Samaritans and the Jews really didn't have much dealing with one another. Well, I wish I had a prayer in church in here. In other words, you remember in the Gospel of John around the fourth chapter, it was described how many of the Jews would go around rather than go through Samaria. But our Lord and Savior Jesus said, I must need go through Samaria. Well, see, remember the Jews considered themselves to be pure descendants of Abraham. 
they considered the Samaritans to be half-breeds. Uh, in other words, after Israel was in exile and, and, and some of the just Samaritan and Jews intermarried with one another, they were considered to be half-breed. So they really didn't want to have any dealing with the Samaritan. We got to be careful, my brothers and sisters, that we don't allow this Samaritan attitude to settle within our church. Uh, do I have a witness in here? My mom and dad have taught me a long time ago, people don't have to be nice, and they are nice. Uh, they don't have to be nice to you. They taught me, be careful of who you turn your nose up to, for someday you may have to bow your knees down to. Be careful how you treat folks on your way up the ladder, because you may have to meet those same folks back down the ladder. I, do I have a witness in here? Be careful how high you think you are today, because you can be up today and not down tomorrow, but down the same day. Uh, do I have a witness in here? So you got to be careful. You got to treat folks like you would have folks to treat you along the way. Uh, Back in the day, we used to all struggle, so it didn't matter because we all struggled together. I never remember that home growing up on Chestnut Street where when we left, we locked our doors because uh, everybody in the neighborhood had about the same thing. Uh, nobody was breaking your house to get anything. There wasn't nothing in the house for somebody to get because we went through the struggle together. Do I have a witness in here? But we learned how to look out for one another. And even during church back in the day when my mother and father would gather on big meeting day uh, they would have big meeting day and they didn't have any family life center uh, they didn't have any, any educational building uh, but they had a, a car and the car had a hood and the car had a trunk uh, and they would lay things off on the trunk and off the hood uh, do I have a witness at here and you'll go from car to car you'll go from trunk to trunk and that's how we would fellowship together with one another but we don't got real uplated now. We done got real sophisticated now. We get to the point we want to know who fixed that food, uh, who made that food, who cooked that food. Uh, do I have a witness in here? I do understand that everybody don't cook the same way. Uh, but I learned a long time ago, my mama used to tell me everything that won't kill you was showing up fatten you along the way. So we didn't have all those luxuries. Uh, we learned to give God thanks for what we were receiving. Uh, do I have a witness at here? And so now we're getting to the point that we separate ourselves and uh, we bring our own Tupperware from home and uh, we put our own name on it and we get our own table. We get in our little corner. We get in a neighborhood where we're blessed with gates in the neighborhood uh, we think we're better than somebody else uh, but you gotta learn like this Samaritan when the Lord bless you uh, the appropriate thing to do uh, is to return and tell the Lord thank you do I have a witness in here it doesn't matter what anybody else think him or not you ought to thank him if you have to thank him all by yourself uh, see somebody here tonight they don't know your story they don't know what you've been through they don't know how the Lord is blessed you uh, they don't know how the Lord is help you. They don't know how good the Lord has been to you. They see you now, but they don't see your struggle. They don't see your pain. They don't know what you've been to. That's why I praise him, y'all. If I got to praise him all by myself, uh, do I have a witness in here? Do I have a few praises in here on this Thanksgiving Eve uh, that made up in their mind that they'll praise God. If they got to praise God all by yourself, do I have anybody here with the spirit of the Samaritan that'll give God the praise that'll give God the glory he gave thanks fell on his face and fell at his knees and Jesus posed the question where are not ten that were clean where are the other nine well they're not ten but where are the other nine and then he told this man arise because of thy faith you see what I'm saying? The man believed enough. And he trusted in God enough to continue pressing forward. Three insights I'll be out of your way real quickly. First of all, I believe this Samaritan was not concerned about what happened with what the other nine were going to do because, first of all, he remembered. Now, I have a witness in here. He remembered. Every now and then, you need to have a flashback and just remember. See, this Samaritan remembered how he was looked down upon. He remembered how they didn't want anything to do with him. He remembered how he was outcast by others around him. 
Sound like the African American race to me. Uh, all you have to do is to remember what the Lord has done for you and remember where the Lord has brought you from. Every now and then, you need a good flashback uh, on this Thanksgiving rather than complaining about what you don't have. Uh, you need to remember how the Lord has blessed you, how you're still here, and how the Lord has his hand on you. Every now and then, you just got to remember of what the Lord has done for you. I don't know about you, but every now and then, I look back over my life, and I, and I have to testify I was nobody but the Lord. Uh, all I need is when I think uh, of the goodness of Jesus and all oh, that that is done for me. Uh, my soul cries hallelujah. I want to thank the Lord for saving me. Uh, now have a witness in there. All I need is a good memory. Uh, you can take away my stuff. Uh, you can take away the things that I have. But I was a time I wasn't fit to live. Uh, time I wasn't ready to die. Uh, time no God on my side. Uh, time no heaven in my view. Uh, but the Lord saved me when I was deep and deep in sin. Uh, for from the peace for sure. Do I have anybody here that was on their way to hell? But the Lord saved you. The Lord redeemed you. The Lord blessed you. Made a way for you. Opened a door for you. Every now and then you just got to remember what the Lord has already done. Not only did our text talk about remembrance, but it talked about every now and then you got to release some stuff. You got to let go and let God have his way. You got to learn to release. You can't move toward the future. I always talk about how bad it was in the past. Do I have a witness in here? I've never seen a car go forward with your foot on the brake. Do I have a witness in here? Every now and then you got to let go and let God have his way. Rather than talking about what you don't have, look at how the Lord is still blessing you right now. Do I have a witness in here? Look at where you are right now. You're clothed right now. And you're still in your right mind. <laughs> Every now and then you got to let go of some old stuff. You got to let go and let God. Let go of some old fuel and old fear and mount up with some new faith right now. So you got to let your faith override your fear. For faith is a substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Uh, and without faith, uh, it is impossible to please God. And he that cometh must believe that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I've learned how to let go and put it in the Lord's hand. For when you put it in the Lord's hand, I believe I got some witnesses here that the Lord will uh, make a way. And he will uh, make a way somehow. Uh, that's why y'all know what my favorite hymn is. Uh, hymn number 286 in the red hymn book. Uh, that just like a ship that's tossed and driven, that's battered by the angry sea. When the storms of life are raging and the fury falls on me, I wonder what I could have done to make this race so hard to run. But I say to my soul, take courage. Do I have a witness in here? That the Lord will, I said I know he will, the Lord will, he'll make a way somehow. And so I've learned how to release some stuff around Thanksgiving because I'm thankful for the way the Lord has blessed me. I've learned how to remember. I've learned how to release. And third and final, I've learned how to rejoice. Do I have a witness in here? As I press toward the close, I, I've learned how to rejoice. Uh, well, it said this Samaritan now, the other nine did not return. Uh, but this one that was a despised Samaritan, he returned and gave thanks unto the Lord. Uh, do I have a witness in there? In other words, he said, I know uh, that was a possible ten of us. Uh, but I don't know where the rest of my crew are. My crew went on about their way. Uh, but I had to come back, Lord, uh, and tell the Lord, thank you. Because that was a time I had leprosy. That was a time I was an outcast. Uh, but the Lord has healed me of my leprosy. So whenever the Lord blesses you, you ought to be able to say, I'm going to go back and tell the Lord, thank you. 
It doesn't matter whether my husband thinks him or not. It doesn't matter whether family thinks him or not. I made up in my mind that I'm going to thank God if I got to thank him all by myself. I'm not worried about the other nine. The other nine don't have a heaven or a hell that they can place me in. The other nine can't save my soul. The other nine wasn't there. You don't know when and you don't know where. But I'm going to thank God if I got to thank God all by myself. Do I have anybody here tonight who feel like the Samaritan felt that every now and then you got to get in a corner if you got to praise him all by yourself. Can I start a praise party before I take my seat right about now? See, I don't know how you feel, but this is the day that the Lord had made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I might not make it a first, but while I'm here on a Wednesday, I'm going to praise God and I'm going to thank God while the blood is still running warm in my vein. Do I have anybody here? I'm going to thank God because I still have his blood. I'm going to thank God because after all that I've been through, I still, I still, I still have joy. Do I have anybody here that still have joy? I've had my share of ups and downs. I've been almost level to the ground, but I still have joy. I've seen the clouds come low, but I still have joy. I've been lied on, lied to, and lied about, but I still have joy. Oh, I wish I had somebody here that can say I still, I said I still, I had some hell to go through, but I still have joy. And that's why I'm here tonight, because I want to praise your God for this day. Do I have a witness in here? And while I'm praising you right now, I want to thank you for last night that you dispatched your angels around my bedside. They watched on me all day long and early and early and early and early you woke me up early this morning i was clothed in my right mind so i come to tell god thank you is there anybody here that would open up your mouth and tell god thank you look at your neighbor say neighbor Say neighbor, say oh neighbor, the law's been good to me, and I know the law been good to you. So put your hands together, open up your mouth, and give God praise. Put your hands together, open up your mouth, and give God praise. Put your hands together, open up your mouth, and give God praise. What's the highest praise? What's the highest praise? I can't hear you. What's the highest praise? What's the highest praise? If you had a football game, I hear you. But what's the highest praise? What's the highest praise? What's the highest praise? I'm not worried about the other nine, but the Lord is worthy. Give him thanks. Remember, release it, then learn to rejoice. Remember, release it, but 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 learn to rejoice. T
ten were healed, but only one returned to say thank you. Will you be in the number? Will you be in the number? Return to tell the Lord thank you. Let us stand. I'm not responsible for the other nine. And that could happen in any part of your life. You're on a ministry, 25 people on the ministry, and you're the only one that show up. I'm not responsible for the other 24. I'm responsible for what I can do. Are y'all feeling me? You're only quiet and your whole soprano or other section don't show up, I'm not responsible for them. I'm responsible for me. So when I stand before God, I got to give an account of my faithfulness. Not anybody else, but because of my faithfulness. Many times you got to show up when you don't feel like showing up. You got to show up when old arthritis is hurting you a little bit. You got to show up when the blood pressure's up a little bit. You got to show up when you don't feel like showing up. Because I remember, Lord, what you've done for me. There may be someone today up on the sound of my voice want to step out on this night from where you are. Give your life to the Lord. Give your hand to the pastor. We will receive you as you come. The door of the church is open as our choir leads us congregationally together in our invitation to him. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, will you come, will you come? Just do not. Will you come? Oh, I'm singing Savior. Oh, Savior. Oh, Savior. Why don't you hear? Why don't you hear? 